You know, everyone has problems. It doesn't mean you have to be a little crybaby about it. Since their rise to prominence way back in the naughty 90s, Radiohead has meant many things to many people. To liner note reading losers like myself, they're vanguards of emotionally resonant eclecticism. To others, they're the forefathers of ponderous miserabilism in alternative rock. Whatever side you take, it's hard to argue their knack for keeping us all guessing. Following the Pay What You Want shadow release of 2007's In Rainbows, they've barely telegraphed a single moment. Be it their side projects, solo endeavours, or artistically ambitious exploits on the big screen. With guitarist Johnny Greenwood an established film composer in his own right, lead vocalist and multi-instrumentalist Tom York took his first stab at a soundtrack with the flawed but fascinating abrasive atmospherics of 2018's Suspiria. Never one to rest on his laurels, York has this time stepped in front of the camera for Anima, a one-reel short directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, or as he's more commonly known, the greatest American filmmaker of the last quarter century. If you've got Netflix in a spare quarter of an hour, go watch the short film first, then head back. This isn't an explained video because A, most of those are condescending clickbait rubbish, and B, this is all my humble interpretation of an intentionally abstract piece. You see, for something so low-key in length, Anderson and York manage more with these 13 mesmerising minutes than most filmmakers could touch on in two hours. The purest way to watch Anima is to slowly sink into the throbbing beats, falsetto melodies, and dazzling design of its three distinct sequences. A man falls asleep on a train, then runs through a gauntlet of passengers and cavernous spaces to try and return a woman's bag. And that's that. A bare-bones thread needled through a network of cinematographic eye candy. The word anima is derived from psychoanalyst Carl Jung's writings on the collective unconscious. In Jungian theory, the anima represents the feminine unconscious within all men and non-binary persons, with the female masculine unconscious being the animus. It supposes an inherent shadow self in all of us, a connection on more than a rudimentary physical plane, a meeting of the rational, calculating mind, and the expressiveness of artistic endeavour. Short version, you can absolutely view it as a man's unconscious search for creative, nurturing qualities repressed by the rigid confines of masculinity in the outdated, non-inclusive Jungian sense. Tom York has mined this dichotomy before, most notably in the video for Ingenue, with its androgynous performative reflection of masculine and feminine. With Anima, we're observing a man stuck between the conscious and unconscious, trying to reconnect with his emotionally liberated counterpart by returning to her a totem of life beyond his cold, clinical existence. It's a visual poem on the work we do and the dreams we deny in order to maintain an equilibrium, and an ode to what Jung calls the displaced anima, where our dislocation from our contrasting unconscious causes a personal rift. This leads to isolation, masochism, and a drifting malaise. The opening subterranean train tunnel rushes by as a whir of neurological synaptic connections. As we climb aboard, the collective conscious slows and succumbs to the sleep-inducing monotony of the daily commute. As sleep takes hold, the passengers begin twitching and bobbing in an erratically synchronised dance of hypnic jerks. Moving in time to their circadian rhythm, on a stage of mechanical noise and fluorescent lights. It's worth noting this is all choreographed with eerie, uncomfortable efficiency by the mastermind of Suspiri's contorted balletics, Damien Jallet. Tom departs his drifting commute and finds himself struggling with the lockstep path he has been lovelessly trudging along. All the while a large poster asks, what happens to your dreams? At which point we descend fully into the unconscious of lights and shadows, muddled together in a cavernous, uncertain space. This idea of sleep as a way to compartmentalise and process is one of the more commonly held theories with regards to the importance of dreams, one certainly shared by Tom York. One of the things you process is, your, is, your, the, is the ability to subtly understand people's language and your ability to integrate mm. into society and other human beings. If the train is the numbing commute, this cold and shadow-strewn space is our resigned working life, 
At first, Tom manages to stride in the opposite direction of these 9 to 5 automatons, only to find that in order to make progress towards a better life, represented again here by the lady's bag, he has to take part in the same uphill struggle of uniformed conformity. Having consigned himself to the notion that the security provided by thankless endeavours often affords our strides towards personal fulfilment, he is swept away by a cacophony of the modern world. As Tom leaves the cave and steps out into the night after a draining, demoralising day of work, the synchronised futile repetitions are replaced with a beautiful ballet of sincere human connection. By reintegrating the previously displaced anima, represented here by actor Diana Roncioni, Tom finds access to creative inspiration, empathy, and an almost euphoric lust for life. Ambient air and delicate, loving embraces fill the void left by the sterility and arduousness of everything it took to reach this point. Evening hours of tenderness unwind as the night is broken by the dawn's chorus. Knowing his cyclical existence is reaching its start once again, he speaks for the first time, mouthing the words, Please let me know when you've had enough. It's the last chance. Whether this is resignation or acceptance is entirely open to interpretation, as is absolutely everything I've said here. Work both affords these tender notes of grace, while also keeping them apart and infuriatingly brief. I like to see it as both a hopeful readdressing of the central work-life balance, as well as a harmonious reintegration between the self and the anima. The lyrical content of the soundtrack, which I'm not playing because I don't want to get in trouble from the internet police, reaffirms much of what I've said, thematically reflecting one another in an exhilarating, pulsing, and profoundly moving couple of minutes. There are allusions to the disenfranchised monotony of common existence, a disinterest in the suburban fantasy, and a want to disconnect from mundaneity. I was reticent to look too much into this wonderful short for fear of over-intellectualising such a brisk, narratively unencumbered joy. There's always the risk of picturing zebras when in reality you're just hearing horses. Adorning the public transport throughout, you'll see photoshopped portraits with cycloptic features. Whether this is a comment on the lack of peripheral vision held by those stuck in their workaday routine, or a reference to Polyphemus from Homer's Odyssey, whose name aptly enough means abounding in songs and legends, is as good a puzzle to sift through as any, but I'm more than happy to concede there's an honest-to-goodness chance they just liked the dream logic oddness of how it looked. With the humour and romance of our dejected dance leader, the Buster Keaton whimsy of pratfalls and stuck turnstiles, and the warmth of human heat, Anima is a film that returns on even the most cursory investment. Whether you want to join me down the rabbit hole of psychoanalytical shot studying, or simply smile and sway along to each expertly judged gesticulation, Anima is a daydream you won't soon forget. As always, thanks to our Patreon producers Jennifer C and Paul of the Pauls, as well as these despicably gorgeous folks who support us over on Patreon. How, if at all, did you interpret this film? Or were you more than content to just sit back and watch Tom York do a bit of a dance? Let us know in the comments, or you could just shoot the shit about our favourite Radiohead tracks. Feel free to share this wherever you do that sort of thing, and if you'd like to see more from the channel including reviews, your name in the credits, and film clubs, consider signing up to our Patreon in the link below. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this is In Frame Out.